So uh, we just want to take a minute or two to show this. Bring, uh, bring the macro lens over. So you know that every snowflake is like every human, a tiny little unique blob of goodness. <laughs> Look at Kevin Marks is, is taking an orange off of his tree. Oh, that's, there we go. That's very, very Californian. How do you like that? Throw that in front of my macro. Isn't that lens. awesome? Kevin, Kevin got up and got an orange. Can we keep doing this while you're resetting, or do we have to? Is this going to be a problem? Uh, how do you do the number of cameras we have that you can take? Yeah, well, all I need is one camera and a screenshot because I want to show Don's um, website, Don, D -O, D O N K O M dot C A. So, what he does is he has a Wow, look at that. This is almost... Oh, and you also have a ring light, which of course you need. Well, the ring light's necessary to get the light on the on the subject. And that's how you get it such a beautiful... Well, when you're at this magnification, your focusing is going to be about... Uh, it, it's labeled as being about... Uh, what does it say? Three centimeters? Yeah, three centimeters from the subject. So if your light isn't right around the end yeah. of the, uh, the lens, you're not going to get anything. And of course, with the crystals, lighting is really what highlights. Can you... John, are you showing the screen or not? I don't know if you, uh, I guess you're not. Uh, Show my screen. Yeah, there you go. So these images are just amazing. And and you, Don, <laughs> I thought maybe you, you know, you, you have them on slides or, but these are on a black mitten. They are. It's, it's a pretty low-tech solution. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. I, I have it here. It's uh, That's the black mitten? That is the black mitten. How do you not get the texture of the mitten on it? You do. That's the problem. Oh. Um, but it's the best solution you've got. Better than velvet? Well, if you've got velvet, then you've got the texture coming in through the entire background, and it's uh. really hard to edit out. Um, but if you've got, um, I guess my website's uh, acting up a little bit. But, well, we're uh, oh, sending a few people there. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, uh, wow, background that. that has to be edited out. Uh, so you in do. Every you go into shot. Photoshop, and you'll and you'll. Uh, Use the healing brush or something to get yeah, rid of but it. that's that's the end of the process. The beginning of the process is combining multiple frames together to get the whole thing in focus. Really? So while it might seem simple to have this big camera pointed at this mitten and take a picture, right? Uh, you, I'll typically take maybe about two hundred pictures of the same snowflake, um, because the depth of field is so shallow. Right. I have to photograph little tiny slivers of focus across the entire thing and then combine them together afterwards in Photoshop Holy to get the cow. full thing in focus. So it's almost like HDR, except instead of um, uh, merging for uh, brightness, you're merging for a focal point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and in order to get the entire thing in focus, I might use 40 frames wow. of the 200. I always overshoot because these, are, uh, these photographs are done handheld. And so what? there's no tripod. Why don't you use or, a tripod? Well, because if I'm trying to get it in the right angle, say if I'm trying to get the, the camera uh, over the mitten and that kind of stuff, my angle has to be very precise and very quick. <laughs> that if I take the time to get the tripod in place, right. the then thing is going to melt. It's going to melt or blow away. or So it, time is of the essence, and it's got to be all done handheld. So is it true every snowflake is unique? Well, all the big ones are, anyhow. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so, <laughs> snowflakes, if you get, like, really small ones that are almost microscopic, they all look like hexagons. They're all the oh, same. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so uh, the reason they're unique is because they're accreting uh, and uh, the crystal's growing, and then it's where it really kind of deviates. And, and there's tons of fun signs to discover in these things. Yeah, oh, yesterday I was just this talking to This is a millimeter. A, about a millimeter in diameter, yeah. And, and so... I was talking to a scientist at Caltech yesterday that studies this kind of stuff, and he was filling me in, in on a lot of the science involved in it. And uh, there's tons of physics involved in why they actually branch oh out from God, beyond a gorgeous. hexagon. And, and there's colors in some of these snowflakes that are created by a uh, prism effect in some of the branches. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing to, to play around with. And How did you get the idea to do this? I was working at a desk job. Uh, I'm educated in advertising, so I had a boring ad agency job. And I just bought myself this new lens as a Christmas gift. And I looked outside, and there's snowflakes falling. And one thing led to another. I had this mitten in my car. You know, Grandma knit them for wow. me to say, keep Grandma! You knew what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a 1D you're using? It's a 1DX, but 1DX? really any camera will work. I just use this for other work too, so okay. it works for the snowflake. And what's the lens? The lens is the Canon MPE 65mm lens. And the special thing about this lens is it'll get about five times closer than the average macro lens. And the value <laughs> in that is is now, you know, I can get into the realm of photographing snowflakes. Where wow. a regular macro lens, you've got to use extension tubes or close-up filters. You can get there, but it takes a bit of extra work. Oh, these are gorgeous. You sell prints? I do sell prints. Uh, right now, the uh, they're all going into a book, a 300-page hardcover book. Now, that's the key. Let's get to the Indiegogo site. So if you go to donkom.ca, 
Where in Canada are you from? Barrie, Ontario. There's, There's a few uh, snowflakes up there. Yeah. Yeah, Barrie, yeah. <laughs> in fact, I just got a message from somebody as I was sitting in the audience here, and uh, he showed me a picture of his front lawn. It's, it's snowing right now. It's snowing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good thing. So igg.me at skycrystals, and uh, you can get in on this uh, Indiegogo project to fund... Uh, snowflake book. Will it be a hardcover? It's going to be a hardcover book, uh, 300 pages or so. That's great. And all the photography and the techniques involved in in creating the images, uh, and and all the science and, and there's psychology involved. I'm in glad thing. to hear that because I think it's more than just looking at these images; it's knowing how they're made. I think that's fascinating. One of the things that I want to do is take a look at you know a particularly complex snowflake and uh, and, and dissect all the interesting little bits of science that are involved in that. And, uh, and and there's more than you'd expect. Some of the snowflakes will have um, a thin film optical interference, which sounds complex, but it's what makes rainbows like that and rainbow. soap bubbles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you can find that exactly in the center of certain snowflakes. There's a lot of fun. That's uh, really neat. And, and it's especially interesting because some of these are, uh, the smallest ones I've photographed are 0.4 millimeters or so. In, uh, in diameter. So the book Oh, has, you already raised enough money. Good yeah, job. Yeah, it, it's, it's successfully funded about two weeks ago. Oh, that's and, fantastic. And all the extra cash is going into making the book better for everybody. So, well, uh, I'm gonna, better I'm gonna, page I'm going to buy in. $35 a level still available. Yeah. That's really neat. October of this year, you hope to get the book out. Exactly. Ooh, greeting cards. Yeah. These would be very nice Christmas cards. Well, you know, I sell them to... Holy uh, cow. I, I, I've got a few law offices and, and political people that buy them because... Yeah, you, they're non-denominational. Non-denominational. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just winter. Exactly. Winter solstice. Yeah. Very cool. So nice to meet you, Don. Really, I, you know, Thank when you Chris Marquardt showed me those images, because uh, that was our assignment uh, this uh, month on the uh, radio show was it was ice. Ice. Yeah. It just happened. You had a few pictures. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing quite a few. <laughs> Thank you, Don, for coming by. I really appreciate it. You, I had to make you wait because uh, we we didn't have enough time, and oh, I, happy I to was wait. glad I could squeeze you in yeah. before our interview with Mitch. That is really great. Thank Good you. for you. Good for you. Wow. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you as Thanks. well. Thank he has you. some slides, which I won't get to see, but you have slides of snowflakes. I'll, I'll How show would you, you preserve it, them? It's actually really easy. Anybody that wants to do it, all you need is glue. Uh, so you put this... Okay, tell me. So uh, is it spray glue? No, no. Uh, well, I, I use a special type of scientific glue that doesn't freeze until like minus 40. Uh, but if you're careful with super glue, uh, you can get it outside, keep it below freezing before it actually gets solid, yeah. and put a drop of it on top of the snowflake. And because it's the same temperature as the snowflake, it's not going to melt as it. As long as it's below freezing, then it's not right. going to melt the snowflake. Right. And it uh, won't destroy it by dropping it on there? Well, I mean, it makes the edges a little bit rounded and that yeah. kind of stuff because it takes a bit of time to, yeah. to solidify. Uh, but, you'll, yeah, you just get a few microscope slides or any piece of glass and wait for a snowflake to either fall on it or I, I move them in place with a paintbrush. <laughs> and, and so You're you, a snowflake wrangler. I am. I am. <laughs> part of the job. <laughs> and then you drop it on there. Do you put the top slide on there then, or do you not put a top slide on? I, I, if I do, I do it afterwards. Okay, just after it hardens. It. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Very cool. Wow, that's a neat project. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Don. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well.